So I'm, I'm still not completely sold on this show, even though we were definitely obviously doing this review and we'll be doing next week's as well. And shit, there's only like three more this year, so I'm sure we'll do all of them. But, you know, there's good, there is some good, and we're going to talk about that. There's def- definitely some bad. And then uh, there are some interesting questions as far as the mystery, uh, as far as what the criminal element of this show is necessarily and we're going to dig dig into all that um i'm brian i'm here with spencer and this is pulp mythos and yes we're talking about big sky uh episode two titled uh nowhere to run uh if you haven't listened to our first uh episode review go check that out um and it's, this is going to be very similar because a lot of the things I enjoyed, I still enjoyed the things I didn't like. It was pretty much almost the same of what I didn't like in uh, this episode. So, yeah, uh, if you've not hit the sub button, please do so. You know, hit a, that like button and leave a comment um, if you have any theories. So, yeah, let's start with, uh, we'll just go with the opening of the episode. Um, I don't really feel either way about this, but Cody, Cody was killed and <laughs> shot in the face at the end of... The first episode, he was uh, billed as the lead actor. Ryan Felipe was going to be the star of the show. Clearly not, although we did get him in a flashback this episode. Uh, but the, Ronald and uh, Rick Ligarski, uh, they buried him. They buried his vehicles. I'm more assuming they buried him. They didn't show the body, but you know, they went through the effort of getting rid of the vehicle he arrived in. Uh, so that answered one question I had last week were, was it the body going to show up or, you know, how were they going to deal with this? Clearly they're just getting rid of the evidence and pretending like he disappeared off the face of the earth. Do you think that's the right story choice or what do you think of that? We, cause I wasn't sure what they were going to do as far as that. Well, I think as much as they've shown that Rick is at least a planner, I don't know necessarily that he has all his shit together, but he's at least trying to you know, play out all the scenarios in his head before he acts. Because even, you know, the stuff with uh, Callie, he's, or Casey. I don't know why I said Callie, but Casey. uh, Yeah. yeah. Uh, But with Casey, you know, he second guessed himself. He stopped. He thought about it before he did anything. So I think when it came to Cody, all of this is pretty well thought out. And it's probably happened several times. I'm sure that there's a couple more cars and stuff buried in that area because why the hell else would they have like an excavator and like it's yeah i I think they've this is their norm so the ones that they don't pick up on truck stops because they're you know prostitutes or they said drug addicts you know people who are on the fringe of society if they got any more kind of like the teenage girls they would have probably done the same thing so i'm sure if they get found, you know, towards the end of this season, they're going to start excavating that area and they're going to find multiple, multiple, multiple vehicles, I think. But I think that Rick is a character who thinks everything out uh, before he acts, which is kind of good in a a villain. Now, I'm sure he's working for somebody way higher up the food chain, but I think that they do a good job of making him a believable bad guy. So I'm going to I'm going to dive head first into what who I like in the show thus far and then we'll go into me complaining. <laughs> so I'm going to go into the things I enjoyed and there's three characters that stick out that I'm like I enjoy these characters. I am interested in where their stories are going. Um we'll start the first one is I was calling the character Michelle last week which is what the character stated in the um being picked up at the truck stop but uh it was pointed out to me on in the comment section and i saw it in a couple of written reviews that the character's name is jerry um jerry's interesting i'm, I'm very curious to see where that story goes i didn't realize that that was um jerry was in the diner at the beginning of the f- first episode and showing the music video you know jerry's an aspiring musician um i like grace and I still, my favorite character is Rick Legowski. Those are my three favorites. <laughs> the show clearly wants me to like Cassie, and I'm interested, but the show is not doing a good enough job of of um, giving me enough of Cassie. I think, you know, if Cassie truly is the lead, I, I need more of her. 
uh, because as of this episode, to me, those three characters are the ones that stuck out the most, and that was the most you know intrigued with as far as their storylines. Uh, you can comment on that, and then I'm going to go into the character I despise <laughs> because well, it, it it is hurting the show. I think, but go ahead. Well, I think that Cassie to me uh, reminds me of Misty Knight and Luke Cage. Like the way she acts, hmm. mannerisms and stuff. That's just who it reminds me of. It's not the same person, um, but it's who she reminds me of. Uh, that like kind of almost like straight no straight laced cop who's a little in over her head, but is still trying to, you know, figure shit out. That's what Misty Knight did in the Luke Cage series. But I think that, like you said, if what they're trying to do now is establish character. So I get, you know, the first couple episodes, that's, that's what they do. Uh, and any network series. So if, like you said, if in the book she's supposed to be the lead, I think that they need to focus a little bit more on her uh, and let her take the reins. Or, you know, at least make her character feel more important to the story. And right now, I don't think that they're doing a good job of that. Uh, I I am interested to see, you know, she clearly has her shit together. She's very smart. But those kind of things, uh, like when Rick, I thought Cassie was going to die. Like I thought that she was going to be the next one to die in this episode. And I was like, oh, shit. But. For her to kind of, you know, make it through Rick's little gauntlet there, uh, it, it made it to where she stands out. Like, yeah, said, that, that that scene was her highlight of the episode, definitely. And I think that that's what they were saying was that she's important, uh, that she stands out. So I think that that was kind of setting up uh, the her character because. Rick was basically saying that she was just black and beautiful, and that was the reason she stood out. But then his exact she, words, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But then she showed us as a character how smart she was, how well thought out she was. You know, taking the situation, the fact that she called the office immediately after talking to him to keep herself safe. You know, there's a lot of things that she did that showed that she wasn't just black and beautiful. She's also extremely smart, resourceful, and all those things too. But it. To me, it shows us more more about Rick, which has been my favorite character. Because even though he's a bad guy, he plays a great bad guy. And I, I just want to know more about his character. I want to know why he's doing it, how he got involved. If this is a church cult thing that we've mentioned in the first episode. like I don't know why he's involved or how he's involved. Uh, fully yet but that's been the most intriguing to me and although you were just like i'm not really on all that on board with ronald i this episode i was like i i'm curious to watch his character not because i i mean he's still like a weird dude and he's still kind of like a normal baby <laughs> yeah he, he's a little weird all right, <laughs> all right we'll, get, we'll get into that but that's intriguing to me like yeah. i yeah want to see where that goes yeah he um yeah i i do know what you mean i i still wouldn't mind if he got killed off but but there there are things about him i am curious about now especially his his uh relationship with his mother that that's some wild shit but like you said very norman bates um, well the fact that she had a an oil painting to of herself <laughs> in her bedroom above her bed that was the most weird like i don't ah, it was just very the, the whole awesome. conversation of uh you know you're pent up and you know basically telling him to go you know relieve himself i mean it was it was so quickly done well it was funny because i almost had to do a double take like wait what like it was very quick and 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 it was so um she said it you know as if you know that's normal conversation that they have and it, you start to understand more and more why Ronald is just so weird as as a as a guy and he you know his whole you know thing about being a hero and it's just it's, I don't know he's funny but then his interactions with with Rick is interesting I want to know more about where that where that relationship started 
and and as far as Rick choosing him, you know, to, to do the work that they do. So well, I think that goes back to the church tie-ins, the cult or whatever, because that's what it feels like to me. That how else would this state trooper have met a long haul trucker? Now it does a it does also say that this has kind of been their network. This is what they've used. And I don't know how high up, like I said, that Rick is, but they use truckers to kind of get these people's on the fringe of society. So I don't know if he pulled them over and recruited him then, because they also said something about how Rick would never give a ticket. He always just helps people and kind of, you know, talk that, you know, talk them, talk to them about how they fucked up and then just let them go. So is that how he's recruiting people? to help is just like you know what i think you're a good guy i think i could use your help like i don't rick is the biggest question mark to me but i also enjoy that part of the story the most yeah um let's see here so yeah ronald yeah, that's about all I really have to say about Ronald in, in, in relation to... Um, well, let, let's go into the mystery of what it is they're doing. So, the, the sh- And this is the weird part. Like you said, okay, we have this mention of a church and sort of maybe this cult. We know now that they're, they're human trafficking uh, women. We know that it's a network. Truckers are throughout the entire United States. But then there's the reference of Canada. You know, I don't know if Canada is going to want them. So is the central organization of this operation operate out of canada you know i'm not really sure or is there a religious aspect to this whole thing or is it just you know rick and ronald's deal because there's a reference to him you know let's go home and pray on it at one point so so there is intrigue and mystery as far as why they're doing what they're doing is it just for money or or is there more to it now now there is more to it in that he he did say that he felt he was helping, you know, clean up the world of, you know, he definitely has an issue with women and, um, Rick is a character and Ronald that, you know, look down on them, you know, that, you know, don't consider them equals. And, you know, there's a lot of their dialogue says that, especially the, you know, the whole interaction with Cassie, you know, Rick was very much speaking down to her in that scene. So, but I don't know if that's just their deal or is that the whole, is this a mob thing or a religious cult thing or both? I don't know. Well, and that's the thing that confuses me the most because the way Rick was talking, you know, basically calling Cassie, it, she's identified as black and beautiful, and that's the only thing that identifies her. Uh, you know, Ronald basically talking about how, you know, the kids of one of the kids is a virgin. We can get more money for her. Like, it's – they – are very they're very much on to the money side of this and they're very much on the uh business side but they also like you said you know like we got to pray about it we got to do this so it feels as though the whatever the cult churches is isn't tied into this human trafficking part however the mom seems to be part of that church and for her to it feels like she's pulling some of the strings like she's constantly checking up on him and it that's partially the weird relationship that they have but i think it's also that she may be ensuring that he's not going to snitch or not falling apart or you know those kind of things too so i think that she's way further in on everything than what they've shown so far which would be weird because if the church is you know looking down upon if that church, not like the church, if that, you know, religious organization is looking down upon women, then why would she be in such a powerful role, which is, which she may not be, but that's just what, conclu- that's what thought I'm, you know, concluding. I could see a twist like that where you find out she's, you know, run, running the church or, you know, a big part of the thing. Um uh, let me let me go into the thing I despise. I just don't like about the show. I don't like the character of Danny or Danielle. I just don't like her. I don't like her dialogue, and and it's legitimately some of the dialogue. I think it's badly written. Uh, I just don't like her. She's she, 
you know, everything about her bugs me. And it, you know, so that you have a scene where shown in this episode that, you know, Jerry is a trans person and the way that that's unveiled is through Danny just being weird. Like she, she's trying to talk to grace about it, like two feet away, like Jerry's not going to hear. And then, and then even the way she questions it, you know, it's just odd. You know, I, I just don't like Danny. I don't like, I don't like anything she says. I don't like the way she says it. Um, and I kept trying to think, I was like, well, is it the writing? I think it is. I think it's a whole, it's the whole character as a whole. I don't know. There's just something off about the character. Well, and you say that too, because like right when she brought it up, there was no like prelude to that. It wasn't like they were talking about something. And then all of a sudden she was like, wait a second. Like it was out of nowhere. So it, her character feels like a, like a teenager, but even more, I don't know. It's like a teenager in a bad high school play, <laughs> like playing a yeah. teenager, like yeah. where everything's over the top and dramatic. Yeah, and Cause stuff. Grace is also, a, you know, a portrayed as a, you know, as a teenager, they're both teenage characters and, um, Grace is way more interesting. And I know, I know there are different types of characters, obviously, but I don't, I don't know, Danny, I I would rework that character's everything about, about her. Well, in in Danny's defense, this is, is only episode two. Um, I go back to, you know, shows like Game of Thrones. Sansa, by the end of the se- the series, I, I was just like, damn, like I, now she went through some shit, but she became this powerful, you know, strong female lead. Whereas at the beginning, I couldn't stand her because she was whining all the time. And so I think that they were establishing this growth of this character. So if they do the same kind of stuff with this character, you know, this whole ordeal makes Danny grow and become, you know, more like Cassie maybe or something like that, then I'll be okay with it. But like you said, as of right now, I am not enjoying her character. Yeah, but Sansa, even though, yeah, there were things that were annoying early on, I didn't feel the the writing was hacky. (laughs) You know, like, like Danny brings, yeah, there are scenes that bring the show down. Like, uh, you know, I'm just like, oh my God, I can't, you know, yeah, I I really don't like the character. If you were to say, um, I don't like her to the point where, if we weren't doing these reviews, she could solely be the reason I would stop watching the show. I would be just like, I don't want to see her. She annoys me. Well, uh, and because they focus on her way more than they need to. Yes. You know, it's they they showed them in that crate probably I think eight times this episode or something like that. So it, that going back to what you know, Cassie seems to be the main character. Yet we're not getting you know we're not getting her like. Yeah, we were focusing on the crate. And if it was, and thank God for, you know, um, the characters, Grace and Jerry, because, you know, they they were carrying the show this week uh, in terms of keeping you, you know, keeping you engaged. Well, and uh, when they started singing that hymnal song there at the end, all I could think of was, oh, Brother, where art thou? <laughs> and I know that that's, that song is in like a ton of movies, but. For whatever reason, we've been watching a lot of Cohen S type stuff with you know Fargo and everything else, and it that's immediately where my mind went was Oh Brother Where Art Thou? But I the fact that they all could sing I thought was a nice little touch because you know they're talking about how can they get to Ronald without basically trying to seduce him because Ronald seems a little bit uh, I don't want to say intimidated by girls, but He's yes. by girls. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, he gets awkward around them. You know, even when Jerry, before he knew that uh, Jerry was trans, he w- didn't want to look. He, you know, he was embarrassed by it. So instead of trying to get out of the crate by seducing him, they're trying to go the religious route because, you know, he's mentioned that before. So that I think that's kind of a, a cool little touch uh, that there are all trying to take that route to do it. It's kind of something different. And I thought that that was an interesting 
way to do that. There was a scene that I I was getting worried about because I I it was the scene which um, Rick was like, "Hey Ronald, you, you go take um, Jerry, and you know she needs to be cleaned up. We're gonna you know we're gonna ship her off to I guess whatever Canada or wherever <laughs> wherever they were gonna gonna ship her." And the shower scene was starting, and and I immediately was like, oh, because clearly uh, Ronald's attracted to Jerry, and my thought was when he learned that you know Jerry was trans, he was gonna you know flip out and be angry, and he was gonna attack, and I, you know, and I was like, oh, I thought that's where it was going, but it didn't. You know, he saw, and then he was like, okay, and then he you know it changed the plans because uh, I guess whoever was gonna purchase Jerry. Uh, it wasn't going to work out because they, you know, expected uh, Jerry not to be trans. But I thought the show was going to do that, and they didn't. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually happy about that. The fact that they didn't do that because uh, it was just a very sort of cliched thing. If they had, um, do you think they're going to explore a relationship? Because clear, like I said, Ronald's clearly attracted to Jerry. Do you think, you know, Jerry might be able to use that uh, to her advantage um, later? As far as you know, escaping because you know she's gonna she's stuck there <laughs> because they're, they're not gonna get rid of her. Well, I think that that's a it, it's a route they could go, and I think that that would add another dynamic to the show because if Ronald defects, like Ronald's like, you know what, I'm not helping you guys anymore. Uh, then what is Rick gonna do? Is Rick, you know, gonna try and kill him? Is you know Jerry gonna be the one that saves Ronald? Like it. To me, that adds a whole nother dynamic to the show if they go that route, which could be very interesting. Uh, and they could, you know, basically have a character arc where Ronald tries to redeem himself. Uh, because we don't know how long he's been doing this. Uh, it's one of those things where kidnapping people and trying to sell them is not a very... You, you can't really redeem yourself from that. But no, no. If, this, if this is the first time he's ever done it, and like he has a change of heart that you know what i'm saying like it's there's a way for it to be a redemption story but i need more of a background on ronald before i can get on board with him having this whole redemption thing i mean you could do the whole um in terms of redemption you, like you said you could have him turn against this whole thing and um he still doesn't mean he's a good guy but you, you could have the character uh, change um like you said we don't know enough about the character's background to, to know how whole, you know well just being in this profession obviously he's a monster but um yeah yes. where are they going with him you know because rick is a is clearly a criminal evil guy but he's interesting <laughs> and you know he, he's a villain that you i don't want to say you root for but you know there are certain villains that you're interested in where their story's going and you want to see what they're going to do next you know, a Joker or something like that. That's Rick. Ronald is sort of the, like I called described him last week. He's de um, pathetic. He's this pathetic guy. Although he was a little more interesting this week, he's still pathetic. Um, but I think there's potential for story, more s story elements with him, uh, well, I especially with the mom and you know all that weird stuff. Well, yeah, I think that they do. They did a good job setting up where Rick or. Ronald could be an important character, but I think that it's one of those things where it's hard to say one way or the other, how it's going to go from here, but it's, you know, like you said, Rick is so interesting it, just because you don't know exactly what his motivation is, what he's going to do. Uh, it's one of those characters that every scene he's in, I'm paying attention. I'm trying to listen to dialogue. I'm trying to listen to maybe hints of that he's dropping that, you know, would lead me to kind of unravel a little bit, which is crazy because if this story is supposed to be about Cassie or even, um, uh, what's the chick from Vikings name? Jenny. Jenny. That's what I couldn't remember what the character's name in the show was, but if Jenny, you know, becomes one of those co-lead type things with Cassie, then, you know, that's that would be interesting because now each season is going to uh, kind of be the P.I. route, you know, kind of like a Perry Mason or whatever it was, but it's going to be done differently. Uh, but 
Rick is that bad guy where every scene I'm like, well, what's he going to do? Why is he going to do that? I need to know more about Rick. Yeah. They're not like straight up. If, if you, which if is you awful. kill Rick off, I, I, I don't know. I might be done. <laughs> so, <laughs> unless you replace him with someone as interesting. He, to me, he is very much one of the, I, I said it last week. He's one of the reasons I'm still watching the show. It, it's that kid. We have Rick Legowski, you know, Montana state trooper. He's the reason I'm sort of invested in the show. And then this episode, like I said, Grace and Jerry, both, um, were interesting characters that are like, okay, I want to see where their stories go to. So those are my three favorites right now. But I, I swear, if you take if you take Rick out anytime soon, I'm I don't, I'm going to be very pissed. That would be very unfortunate. <laughs> um, hopefully, we <laughs> who would take over? Exactly. Think, you know, bad guy wise, who would take over the mantle of the main bad guy? Now, could that be? Um, Ronald's mom she could uh, do that but they haven't given me enough of Ronald's mom to care enough about her so if you switch to the bad guy was you know episode 4 you gotta do some work before I'm gonna give a shit about the new bad guy also the whole Ronald and his mom dynamic I think works if it's a little bit you know what I mean? A little scene here, a little scene there. If that became the main sort of um, villain plot, I don't think that would work. Well, to me, it gets, you know, and it being a side story makes it not feel like uh, Bates Motel. But if it became the main story, then it becomes, it feels repetitive. It feels like something that's already been done before. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, there are the things we could talk about. I guess I, yeah, let's just talk about the the hunt for the women real quick, and that's pretty much it. Um, so, like you said, Cassie Cassie is clearly a natural when it comes to um, investigating, and you know, she's just sort of really good at it. She's already narrowed down the fact that it's truckers. Uh, she feels that Cody's something happened. Maybe he's dead. She thinks she's definitely sure that Rick is involved and she's investigating him. And then you have Jenny is at the truck at one of the truck stops because, uh, the diner where, where Jerry used to hang out, uh, the waitress was like, Hey, you know, my friend's missing. And so, you know, she explained to her that the work that Jerry's into, and then, you know, Jenny goes to the truck stop, which was a good scene. That that whole uh, truck stop scene, you know, it was real quick, but basically showing, you know, her tipping and you know, her paying the guy for the info, but then basically telling him, you know, you have to um, help me or, you know, I'm going to get you in trouble because she had already investigated how he operates. Uh, well, like we said there were. Go ahead. Gonna- other shows that we've watched too, you know, you look at the undoing and, um, you know, Perry Mason, all these shows, you can't approach somebody without having all your ducks in a row. And Jenny did a good job. She already knew what she was going to say to that guy, did research on that gentleman. You knew how to get him to comply before she ever even approached him, which I think is brilliant because then if she wouldn't have had that information if she wouldn't have known that he was, you know, selling to Myers and stuff. He could have just been like, nah, fuck you. <laughs> and what would she have been able to do? Nothing. But now she, she was able to gain leverage, which uh, I think is important. Yeah. And like I said, we, you know, we got those little, little bitty scenes where, you know, showing them doing their job and leading, you know, them lead, leading them to this case. Um, I thought it was interesting at the early in the episode, you know, she has another confrontation with Cassie about, um, Cody. And then we get a flashback of Cassie, you know, being romantic with Cody. And I was like, Ryan Felipe, he's in one episode, he gets killed off, but he was, you know, able to work it out. I mean, I'm not saying it was him that worked it out, but he basically gets to, you know, a love scene with both of the lead women, um, you know, very attractive women on the show. I thought that was funny. Cause I'm like, you're dead. And then, yeah, you, yeah he's still able to, to throw that. In. Yeah. I'm like, um, do you think we're going to get more flashbacks of Cody going for, I don't know if I'm into that idea or not. I, I wouldn't be opposed to it if they didn't 
make it the love triangle focus of the flashback. Uh, that's a great point. I agree. So, like, if the next flashback is him talking to his son, because they showed Jenny going and talking to, you know, their son and, you know, being worried about their dad still. So maybe if the next flashback is the son, you know, reminiscing about this thing he did with his dad and then knowing that uh maybe this is where we need to look because me and dad went here this one time and he always mentioned you know after he went on a bender he liked to go here to cool off or you know whatever so they could do it that way but if it's the love triangle stuff that they constantly keep doing quit my girl shit what do you want (laughs) but if they keep doing it that way then i'm not gonna be on board because it to me Ending that episode one was the most brilliant part of the show, I thought. <laughs> because that became not the focus of the show. The focus of the show became the case. But if they're going to keep going back to it, I'm not I'm not on board with that. Yeah, I, that, that's a great point. I agree. I think if you're going to have the flashbacks, it should serve the story and get away from this love triangle thing. I, I, I'm just, I'm not interested in it. I think, I think it hurts the characters a little bit. I think, like I said, Cassie is a character I want to know more, know more about. And I think that sort of dis- is a distraction for the character at the moment. Um, hopefully she has more screen time next episode. Like I said, we got a little, we got a little thing. We know she has a kid, but the, the, yet there's been no dialogue about that. We know that her husband, I believe, was killed in action. There's a one little scene about that, so we get little tiny pieces. But, but I, I want more of that character, especially if they're in fact the lead. Um, but you know, this is only the second episode. I believe it's uh, going to be a ten episode uh, storyline. But but there's going to be a break in the middle, so we're only going to get like four or five, and then. Uh, have to wait a month so you're they're gonna need to hook us <laughs> and yeah. make us want to come back in january well uh, and that's the big thing like you said it, you can't you can't lazily do the first couple episodes if you're planning on people to come back to watch the rest so you got to be able to you know like you said get that hook in you got to have something that's intriguing to me something that is an answer that i want and if they're going to continue to focus on Danny and, you know, that's not the answer I want. I'm not going to be as interested. Uh, or the one they focus on that still, I'm like, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Uh, so, yeah, still not completely sold on the show. Like I said, there are things I'm, I'm liking. Um, but, yeah, that, that's that's where I'm at. As far as uh, Big Sky currently, um, like I said, we're definitely going to do next week's episode. Um, after that, who knows? Well, I'm curious if the show's ratings are going to drop off, or how are they going to maintain? And will that affect? You know, we're having a pretty good response as far as y- the viewers. Uh, we'll, you know, if the show's ratings are affected, obviously that could drop our our viewers. And um, I am curious about that. I'm very curious of, of how the show is doing. Because I know the, the reviews are very middle of the road to, to bad. Um, there are some people that like it. But for the most part, if you go looking at the reviews, they're very sort of um, on the low end. So, I don't know. Uh, anything else to say about the show before we wrap this up? I, I would like to see it continue. Um, just because I don't want to not know (laughs) i mean even if it's not greatly done i still want to know the end of this story that they've so far enticed me with so i would really like for them to finish that but like you said if it's if it basically gets lazily written and they not and they're not doing a great job of carrying out the storyline then we're not going to get it so i would I think if they do away with the love triangle, if they, like I said, Danny could suck right now and that could still be okay <laughs> as long as she's not the focus. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, we're, we're done here. Uh, 
tune in and the next week is a huge week for the channel two major shows that we're watching are having their finales the undoing on sunday night and then uh, we'll be doing fargo on monday uh, like i said both series ending very very interested to see where those where those storylines go and we will be extensively talking about them starting a new series uh the following sunday december 6th uh, your honor it's a series starting and it airs on Showtime. We'll be doing that every Sunday night for, I believe, like 10 weeks. And then uh, we got a couple other things we're looking at. Um, we're, we're talking about possibly doing The Stand. I believe that starts mid-December. Uh, if you're going to be watching The Stand, let us know in the comments. Uh, we haven't 100% decided, but we, we're definitely leaning in that direction. And we will be doing WandaVision, which starts mid-January. Uh, so that's some of the things we have upcoming. Um... Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.